Hello everybody, my name is Professor Sumuno Isaac Barry. Uh, I'm from Barry Science Lab and today we're going to be looking at some more, you know, physics. So, today we're not just going to be looking at a simple harmonic motion. We've looked at that for a long time now. We're going to be looking at damped simple harmonic motion. Now, Regular simple harmonic motion is like this. Well, first of all, before we advance, you may ask me why I'm holding a makeshift keychain, or at least what seems to be a makeshift keychain. Well, let me tell you something important. This is not a makeshift keychain. What it is, is actually a homemade spring. So you can see it kind of vibrates, and when I like gently pulse it, you can see it vibrates kind of bobs up and down for a little bit. So now, uh, if I just dunk it in, if I just, you can see water has quite a bit of friction, so if I let this go in water, you can see it stops like zero, half a second. But you can see this keeps going uh, for quite a while. Here. Sit down under it. So if we get a closer look, yeah, okay. So, that stopped relatively quick. I'm going to put that in slow motion. That stopped relatively quick. Now, if we do it on land, with the exact same position, it lasts for quite a bit of time. The water just, you know, phases out. Bobs up one cycle and then goes back down. So evidently, that must mean that uh, water has a little bit of friction. So that means if you were to take, uh, first of all, in the 15, that's a big spill. So, now, that means that if we were to obtain an ideal spring, obviously I don't have that with me, and then dunk it in water, it would most probably uh, vibrate for a little bit less time than it did on land. So, uh, it has a force of friction in the water now. So, uh, if we point this face down, there's a few forces running here. The force of tension that's trying to get the thing back up to its equilibrium phase. So, that's the spring's tension. There's FG, which you probably all know. And then there's, you know, the force of friction from the water. So, now, the force of friction from the water is going to be negative BV. What is B, you may ask? And, well, B is equal to, the, really, the strength of the friction. It's kind of like the coefficient of friction rebooted. So, yeah. And no, I am not going to tell you what a velocity is, because you should know at this point. So, that means that FT and uh, FD are here. So, FD is obviously MZ. And, oh, yeah, negative MZ. And FT would be equal to negative KX. Now, we know that sigma F is equal to MA. Oh, yeah, what is our goal here? Well, our goal here is to find the graph, the exact graph, and the exact function that affords the graph that, that satisfies this kind of scenario. Uh, I would hypothesize that it looks something sort of like this, where the pulses slowly die out. Uh, but we still have yet to find the equations. So, you can see the pulse dies out 
which is probably what's going to happen as we can see in real life with the keychain and water problem. Uh, what is that sound? Please remove the distraction. Uh, sorry everybody for that uh, minor inconvenience. Uh, so, Sigma F, we can break apart. Wait, let's first break apart A. A is dv over dt. dv is equal to dx over dt. So that would be d squared x over dt squared. So, m d squared x over dt squared. So that means dx so t, uh, d squared x over dt squared equals so sigma f is minus kx uh, minus bv minus fd is minus md. So these are probably going to become positive divided by m. So now what we can do is make these separate on their own. And this starts to look kind of familiar to, this uh, starts to look similar to a regular string equation. Except, there seems to be some sort of new thing here. So, uh, when we set b to zero, this uh, is all fine and we go back to regular simple harmonic motion. But now we have this guy to deal with, b, v over m, which is sort of a problem. So, now, um, that's a very, that shows just how new something can become. So, now, uh, let's look at this. Now, this is a very complicated equation you have to do. This is our new differential equation. Uh, as a physicist, you either do calculus, which is the boring way, that will take a little bit of uh, minutes, which we don't have time here, so. And then we have the uh, guessing way, which physicists use. And so, uh, <coughs> physicists use uh, special techniques, uh, techniques to guess. Now, uh, what we would use is uh, probably a component that determines at what rate the amplitude sinks down, and then uh, something that determines the graph, probably a cosine theta or something like that. We know the graph is determined and defined as cosine uh, omega t plus uh, theta, but what about this part? Well, this is A for amplitude, Euler's number. You probably know what Euler's number is. If you don't search it up, it's 2.72. And then it's raised to the negative bt over 2m. As you can see, if you scale b up, it, uh, you, you can see that it slopes hot uh, and kind of just like whoops instantly. Um, but if you scale it super low, there's nearly no difference shown in the graph. So, uh, that means, oh yeah, it also depends on the mass. If it's heavier, uh, yeah, that's going to cost you some. So, now, that is the equation at which, uh, that is the equation at uh, which predicts how something will, uh, uh, the motion of something in space time. <laughs> so thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.